Right is reporting on X.com yesterday that the claim made in the horrific story about a Tesla robot hurting a Tesla employee, one in 22 employees had an injury that was, at, and that was actually a great stat. So the report stating that one in 22 employees had an injury, intending to suggest that this was a horrific problem at Tesla, well, that would be 4.8% of the employees annually having some kind of an injury or reportable industry, but the total for the, the entire automotive industry is 6.5. Well, a little quick bit of actual reporting by any of the multiple sources that carried the story might have changed that headline to Tesla better than their peers when it comes to industrial accidents. Yeah, but no, that wasn't going to be the way it was. Elon Musk chimed in on this story. He says, truly shameful of the media to dredge up an injury from two years ago due to a simple industrial KUKA robot arm found in almost all major factories. He says all factories, but major factories, large factories that deal with sizable equipment and imply that it was due to Optimus Now. He put in an X post yesterday. Well, the story has legs and more legs and more legs. A reporter, Becky Patterson, Peterson, she goes by at Beck Peterson on uh, X, says she originated the story and, sh and uh, she was trying to stick by her claims on a post yesterday. But our own Scott Walter undid her theory easily. He says, Becky, thank you for bringing this to my attention. I have a thought experiment for you. You and I are working in a crowded kitchen together. I do not see you behind me. And I turn to complete my task and elbow you in the side. Did I viciously attack you or did I accidentally bump into you? Robots do not attack. That implies sentience. And the robot involved used no AI in its controller at all. AI sentience is also very debatable. Well, that's Scott's statement. I'll say sentience is probably not a thing. Anyway, Scott also notes that Becky did not create the odd spin on her report, like, you know, blood on the floor and, and uh, stabbed in the back and all that kind of stuff. That was uh, the uh, Daily Mail and uh, yeah, lists and lists of other U.S. national and, and other national publications. Well, yesterday afternoon, that story has been debunked on many, many levels, but the almost new source called Fortune had this headline, a Tesla factory robot reportedly attacked a worker and left them bleeding. This become a, become a new reality in the increasingly automated workplace. workplace. Oh my, oh my gosh, <laughs> automation. Uh, I, should I have to, I don't have to say this to you guys. Automation has been going on for, uh, oh, since Henry Ford, but actually it goes back uh, centuries before that, uh, in fact, millennia before that, automation is uh, not a new thing. It's not new on any level, um, anywhere in the world. It's, this is just such nonsense. Well, I will be appearing on TMC Live with Harvey Levin this morning at about 1045 California time, and we will be discussing that very article. This is Randy Kirk. In case you are in questioning that at all, <laughs> please hit like if the content is helpful in any way. Please hit subscribe. Please hit notify. As usual, we will have Bradford Ferguson on later tonight. We will have Larry Goldberg on tomorrow. Now, my plan is to put up a video later today around noon that talks about where Optimus is right now and answers a lot of questions that people still seem to be confused about. However, there's at least a chance that that TMC interview might create a newsworthy, newsworthy interruption in my plan today. All right, for the rest of the news, Tesla is continuing to surge upward this morning at a much faster clip than the MAG-7 and much faster than the indexes so far in the early going. We'll report more about that in a few minutes and give you current prices and the usual analysis at the end of the video. Tesla Roddy and many others are reporting this morning that according to local media in India, Tesla and Elon Musk are in the final stages of negotiations with the government regarding land for a manufacturing facility. Tesla and India have had discussions throughout the years with the pair almost reaching a deal plenty of times, only for talks to ultimately lead to nothing. Well, We'll see if it's finally going to be more than nothing. The Daily Mail, I don't know if I can quote the Daily Mail today, but I don't know if I can quote any of these folks anymore, but I guess 
It's hard to get this wrong. The Daily Mail, Mail says that a survey of 1,000 likely U.S. voters of all ages, I don't know why it would be voters. Why would they use voters for this poll? Anyway, they found 38% think positively about EVs, while over half of the 18 to 30-year-olds view them favorably. Overall, just 28% said their attitudes towards EVs were very or quite negative, and women were much more hostile than men towards them. Recent polls shows that many in the U.S. are against the aggressive push to switch from gas to electric. That's a kind of a separate issue. Gas stoves rather than electric stoves. I, are they talking about gasoline versus, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it goes on to say, experts have cited high prices for electric cars and a lack of charging station infrastructure among the main concerns. And range anxiety was still the number one drawback for Americans in the latest survey. Words like charging station and batteries came up most in respondents' written uh, answers to their own biggest negative about EVs in the new poll. Now, to me, what was really interesting about this story um, the, was the headline. It said, four in 10 Americans now view electric vehicles positively overall. Maybe the Daily Mail has been chastened by all the flack they're getting for the robot story. <laughs> you believe that? Anyway, I think the headline would have normally have read almost 30% of Americans have no use for an electric car. Anyway, all right. So Tesserati is reporting this morning that Tesla is expected to report a solid fourth quarter this year during its last earnings call for 2023. Based on 14 analysts on the LSEG poll, the Texas-based company is forecast to report about 473,000 units in the fourth quarter deliveries and a total of 1.82 million deliveries worldwide for the year. Analysts polled by, by Visible Alpha forecast by Visible Alpha, they forecast that Tesla will deliver 2.2 million units in 2024. Compared to the 37% growth between 22 and 23, Tesla's growth in 2024 is expected to be slower. Um, well, okay, that's fine. If you want to believe that, most first of all, a couple of, couple of comments are number one, interesting that the 14 analysts that they're polling are now pushing the number up a little higher than it has been over the last few weeks. Uh, there are people forecasting at 500,000. There are people that are forecasting that the total will come in exactly uh, 1.8 million. Uh, we'll see where it all comes in. I think anything over 1.8 million should be a win. Um, also, we have uh, uh, that Xiaomi, uh, a Chinese company, is getting a lot of press this morning as it unveils a new EV. This, this will be its first automobile. I'll get. I'll report more on this later. Uh, most of you in the in my audience seem not to care very much about the competition. I've done lots and lots of articles about the competition, about the 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 those that are succeeding and not succeeding in China, uh, and usually those uh, stories don't get much much legs. But I, I think I do need to dig into this Xiaomi decision to get into the auto business. Uh, but the the vehicle, kind of, according to reports, kind of looks like a Polestar. So we'll see what that's all about. Um, initial jobless claims, claims came in this morning at 218,000. That is totally in line with expectations. Uh, but also the the uh, there was also revealed um, it, that the the long term unemployment was 1.3 percent, and the four week moving average was at 212. This was a decrease. So uh, both reports totally in line, won't affect the markets this morning. Retail inventories and wholesale inventories were both down this morning as anticipated around 1%. One, there were two different numbers, but both around 1%. This is a very good thing, is exactly as I anticipated and suggested earlier this week on my uh, Tuesday morning report. Um, th this is suggesting that companies are continuing to become way more efficient in their inventories as they unwind from the COVID nuttiness. And also that this would suggest we could maybe be expecting more factory orders to replace these lowered inventories going into the new year. Um, trueflation continues to hang around right at that two point level all this week. It's been around there 2.58, I think this morning. Okay, as you know, I'm the only person that reports this. <laughs> so the trucking association, 
uh, has the seasonally adjusted for hire trucking tonnage index decreasing 1% compared to October. I believe that truck tonnage is a future indicator of where the where business is going. A 1% decrease will not tell us much. Uh, in fact, this is after a 1% increase in the month of October. So this would suggest that over the last three months, things are pretty much level, level, level. Um, but if we see anything, uh, we'll go. So the report also said that the tonnage index increased nearly 1%. Oh, I said that. <laughs> So uh, when compared to the same month last year, the seasonally adjusted index fell 1.2%. This is the ninth straight year-over-year -year decrease. In October, the index was down 2.4% from the same time a year earlier. Well, okay. So overall, I would say that truck tonnage is telling us that we're going to be flat for the next few months, or at least that's kind of the direction that we're seeing. Um, and down from the third quarter would make sense. Uh, anyway, we'll continue to report this each month as one more canary in the coal mine. Okay, we need to take a look now at the numbers. We have got Tesla continuing to be up, although again, we've it's so interesting. This is such a such a trend lately, starting very strong and then immediately some profit taking. But that is happening overall to the indexes and to the MAG-7. So Tesla started out this morning over 1% up. It is now 0.21% up. Uh, it, it looks like it's bottoming and curling up again at this point. Uh, but the MAG-7 is mixed with uh, most mostly up this morning. Um, actually, now Tesla is the least. Well, OK, so Tesla's in line now started up much stronger than the indexes and much stronger than the MAG-7, but now is in line with all of them. It just up 0.05% at 261.58. The trend line is not good in the opening moments here. Uh, we'll see what else we can add to the story. Uh, we have got the um, the uh, Kathy Woodstocks also mixed, and they were 100% in the green just a few minutes ago. So the overall trend this morning looks to be down. Let's see if the rest of the numbers give us any hints. Let me go into the rest of the numbers. All right, we have the bonds. Yeah, so the bonds are a little strong this morning. Uh, Ten-year is up almost four basis points, but it's a 3.828. I mean, that's really, really low. Uh, well under the 3.9 recently, uh, but no longer pushing towards that 3.75 area where it had been recently. Um, all of the uh, the uh, bonds this morning are up except for the two months, interestingly, which is slightly reinverting. It is down uh, 0.1 basis, I mean, one basis point this morning. Um, okay, let's look at the rest. Uh, just a second here. We have got oil this morning. Uh, going uh, down about 1% on both uh, Texas Intermediate and Brent. Uh, the difference between them continues to be about $5.5, so that hasn't changed. We've got natural gas up another 3% this morning. So again, remember, natural gas is way low compared to normal, uh, but has been up strongly the last couple of three days. We've got gold uh, down this morning, but still way up at 2085. We've got copper down this morning, down a full percentage point. We have got the dollar continuing to dip. We have got the Bitcoin down 851 at 42,563. That's the first downward movement in a while. So <laughs> with the, the markets overall down, uh, we've got, uh, let's see, let's look at the markets here. We've got the, well, not down. Okay, so we've got the NASDAQ up slightly. Uh, 19 points are 0.12%. The S&P up 8.46 points are 0.18%. We've got the Dow up 65 points are 0.17%. So all three right in the same range there being up around 16, 17% this morning. Uh, and uh, let's go back to Tesla just to see how things might have changed there in just those few minutes. We now have Tesla actually negative along with most, uh, about half of the MAG-7. All right, so let's also talk about what's going to be happening now the rest of today. Uh, first of all, not sure whether you've placed your order yet. Uh, you know, you got money from mom, right? Didn't you get your, 
Did, I'm sorry, some of you, your moms are still alive. My mom is 97 and a half. She's just cooking along there. Um, but if your mom gave you money for Christmas, are you trying to decide what to use it on? Well, how about a Cybertruck bottle opener? <laughs> I have to change this pitch from time to time. Anyway, right now I'm running that special. 25 bucks for one. And if you buy more than one, it's 20 bucks a piece. Just multiply however many you want to buy times 20 and you got the number. If you're outside the U.S. zip codes, add another 20. If you are in Australia, New Zealand, Japan, all that Pacific Rim stuff, add $30, please, because it costs a fortune to get the, the these openers over in that part of the world. And then, of course, uh, let me know whether you want the camouflage or the stainless. Uh, later this morning, as mentioned, we will probably do that robot story, but maybe not. It might be the other robot story. So we'll either be talking about the good news associated with where is Optimus now and answering questions that I've heard you guys asking and some other people asking. Um, and it's a, I think it's a really super good video. You're going to want to, want to see it. Bradford Ferguson later tonight. Uh, oh, yeah. Yesterday, we had the Brian White part two of our little series, and it was a big hit. If you didn't see that video, I'll put the card right here. Uh, I think that's all I've got for you right now. Let's, oh, you know, I always do this at the very, very end. We take a quick look at Tesla back in the green. So it's been going down since a strong opening, been going down, but it keeps trying to go up. What do you think? I think that we need to get to 275. Uh, today. Yeah, that's. I think we need to. That is not a prediction. I am not a stock advisor. <laughs> I'm not an investment advisor. Do, do your own homework. Anyway, this is Randy Kirk. Hey, it's been great talking to you.